Hola guys, welcome to another edition of What's Poppin' the Podcast on 93.9 WKYS. And today we are joined by my good girlfriend, Monica the Curvy Diva. Welcome. Hey. Yes, so tell everyone about the Plus Report. So the Plus Report is... It's a YouTube talk show, and we report on everything that happens in the plus-size fashion community, from entertainment, fashion shows, expos, all that good stuff. So they travel, they go to, like, all sorts of fashion shows, they go pretty much everywhere, anything that's, like, plus-size related, they are down with. Yes. Now, you are, you wear many hats. You are a speaker, you are a host, you are a model, you're all these things. How did all of these things get started? Um, It was just a passion, actually, Um, something I've wanted to do for a long time. A lot of people who meet me don't know that when I was younger, my mom put my sister and I kind of at an etiquette school called KL Image Developers in Prince George's County, and we did fashion shows. So it's always been there to be in fashion and model and things of that nature. Okay. So, um, And then I always wanted to be in a national pageant. So it started back in 2013 when I was in Miss Plus America. I was Miss oh. Maryland Plus America 2013 and ambassador in 2015. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's kind of how I got into it. Then people just started to follow me. I started to go to all the events. And then I wanted, I knew I wanted to do runway. I was like, I got to try runway out. But pageant coach told me, like, the first thing she said was, everybody wants to be a model. I mean, who doesn't want to? Kind of like everyone wants to be a rapper. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. And okay. she, but she said <laughs> the, the plus community needed more than models. Hmm. So she said, you know, if you don't make it runway, there's going to be something else for you. Find your niche. Oh, that so was sage advice. It was because it stuck with me. A lot of people, there are new models coming all the time. We're always meeting new ones casting. And so then Curves Rock, which is in Baltimore. Which is amazing if you've never experienced. Right. Curves Rock. That's where we met, actually. That's where we met years ago. Right. I ended up being their spokesmodel in 2015. And that kind of showed me that I had the ability to host, to speak well to people. Because remember, we did the panel together um, about body image. And then I had to do their red carpet. Mm -hmm. And so that really showed me what my skill set was. Okay. And so even though I had casted for Curves Rock, District of Curves. And Which is Amazeballs, and they've been on the show. Yes, and that's who I managed by, the <laughs> District of Curves team. All right, Mickey. Yes. Um, and I had auditioned for Full Figured Fashion Week, which is like mm. the coveted fashion show that's in New York. Okay. I've actually been a part of all three, but not as a model. Really? Yes. I was spokesmodel for Curves Rock. I host co-hosted District of Curves in 2016 mm-hmm. with the Curvy Fashionista. Yes. Who's one of like the big time bloggers. Yes. And this year, the Plus Report team went and did media for Full Figured Fashion Week. Wow, that's right. I remember you went there. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, see, it's like it's full circle Mm -hmm. that, like, what she said really came true of, like, if you don't make it as the model, there's something else. That's really great advice. I would have never thought about that, but that's really great advice. So, what kind of advice would you give? Because, you know, the model world, whether you're full uh, plus size or... I don't know. Regu- I don't want to say regular size. <laughs> Straight but- size is what they say. Okay. Um, like if regardless, it's treacherous and there's, you know, steep competition. Right. Like what advice could you give someone who's just up and coming in that? Um, if you're a mom, I'd say have some thick skin because you may get a lot of no's, um, especially in the plus model world. People think that like I'm plus <clears throat> size, I'll get in. Um, you have a sidebar, and I feel like they say that because they feel like we're like just desperate, right? Like, oh, well, I'm big, I can get in because they, they've taken everybody. You <laughs> no, know what and, I mean? And you know what? That's not true because though we are very inclusive, yes, we but are. not that way. But <laughs> there, there's sign, there's signed models, there are freelance models, and and then what we call like the Instagram models. Mm. Um, and not to say anything, any of it is bad, but that's one thing actually that I'm trying to start looking at is kind of like how the the industry is shaping up for models. Okay. Um, because you see people in all of these great shows that I've mentioned and other shows that they're, that are coming around and coming up, but not everybody is signed. And some people mm. really want to get signed. And you have agencies like Dorothy Combs, Ford Models, Wilhelmina, um, True Model Management, just to name a few. But they all say you have to have your proportions right. And now they're also starting to look at extended size. But it's What's about... That? Extended size is past like a size 26, 20, like a 26, 28 and up. Really? There's a 30 and 32. Because, you know, women, plus size, it's all range. Yes. And just 118. We're all kind of like 
clumped in the same. Right. Mm -hmm. And so a plus size really starts at a size 14. Mm -hmm. So, and it goes, like I said, all the way up. And then you got like what they're calling extended sizes. And you have um, like brands that. That's like. That's a soft way to say it. I like right. that. Right. Okay. Eloquy got into extended okay. size. Okay. Eloquy we love, <laughs> just for the record. But go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, you see how I find out so much by interviewing everybody mm -hmm. and kind of looking at the lay of the land. This is, I get to find out all this cool information. But I'd say, you know, if you really want to get into it, really know what you're getting into. Do you think that, I'm sorry to cut you off, do you think that, the, like, the model agencies are still kind of, even though you're plus size, you still kind of got to be hourglassy? That's what we see a lot. Okay. Um, there is a push more so to see uh, what they call real bodies, mm -hmm. not what everybody think is ideal. Okay. You know, um, and when they say proportion right, they have specific measurements that you that they go by where oh really right but then it's not just them it's also the brands so that's why you kind of have the bloggers and everybody continuously pushing for brands to do more and it's what the brands want is like a a, a um what we call a fit model of how they make their clothing and fit their clothing right because you know you go into one store and their size 18 doesn't fit you you've got to go up to a 20 or 22 right, right so it's all about that like what is the client looking for a model agency is only gonna is gonna sign you because based on what type of work they can get for you okay because they're looking at their clientele and what their clientele needs okay so it's what they need to give to the pro to the market okay so don't think you can't make it because there are a lot of freelance models out here too like <clears throat> like i said my pageant coach she was a model she was a pageant girl but she was not signed but she had clients mm. and that was because her client she played to what her clients needed from her for photos and to advertise do you think that um, the uh, pageant way of life is kind of a better introduction into modeling versus just jumping out there and starting modeling? No, they're two different worlds. Okay. Because even when you're in pageants, your pageant walk, your pageant poise. They're different than a runway yeah, walk? Girl, totally you know. <laughs> You know, I don't know. <laughs> I know. Don't act surprised. As, as many events that you've come to, you're just like, yay, go women. Yay, I yes. love your bodies. Yes. Uh, which we all know we're all a sisterhood, but there is totally different walks. I did not know way. that. Yes. There's a walk for your, for your evening gown. There's a, you can't be all sassy on the runway in the pageant. Just think of like, when we say it um, in the DMV, DC kind of area, is think first lady-ish. Okay. Michelle Obama, that elegant type walk all the time. Fashion shows, you can be a little different. Oh. You may be able to be a little bit more sexy on the runway because you may be modeling uh, lingerie. And there is plus size lingerie, and we get that on the runway. So let's talk <laughs> about this plus size. First of all, I didn't know that. Like, I didn't know there were different walks. I, we just, I just saw you at, oh, my God, uh, the airport. Oh, oh my God. City, National Cars Day. Thank you. Jesus. <laughs> I'm, it's been a long day. I'm sorry. Yes. And so, like, of course, I was put on the spot, and I, you, made me walk down this stupid-ass <laughs> runway. And it's not a stupid-ass runway. It was a stupid-ass runway because I had to walk down but it. It was long, too. It was, like, one of the longest runways ever, and I made her Jesus. do it. Jesus. Hey, look, you said you wanted to stay confident. Yeah, that didn't help. And <laughs> I must have looked at my feet the whole damn time I walked down the thing. I but got to the end. you made me do it after And you. turned around, and, look, photographers at the end were like, no, 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 stop. Let me take a No, no, no. <laughs> And I beelined right back. And I basically shuffled because I was afraid but I was going to fall with my hurt you, back. Look, you've got to walk down and you've got to give that pose. Yeah, I, I don't even, can't even. It's not even, that's not even in this. We're not doing that. Yes, indeed. Okay, so if someone wanted to learn, like, all of these different walks, um, is there a modeling school? So, yeah, there's several ways you can learn. There are people who hold classes all the time. One of the schools here, um, Asha Smith, she is a model coach. She was the coordinator for National Curves Day. She's been the coordinator for District of Curves. Okay. The name of her school is Ray Usir School of Modeling, Acting, and Refinement. Okay. And then uh, Lyris Cross, actually. Lyris is so dope. Lyris. Yeah. We love. She used to, I don't know if she'll ever do it She's again. She's like a plus size goddess. She but. is like goddess, uh, queen. Mm -hmm. She used to actually host a class called Life of a Working Model Boot Camp. I don't know if she'll bring it that, back. Yes, I did. Uh -huh. I went to New York and took it where she had a panel talking about this type of stuff, how to get into the industry, what they're looking for, how to get magazines to, you know, submissions and being on the cover. Mm -hmm. um, but then she also did a runway 
spot in that class. Oh, okay. So um, a different model, Judy Ferguson, she travels. She is one of the top Petite Plus models. She was just in Baltimore with um, the show that's coming up that we were talking about before we came in here for um, Powerhouse Plus Models. Mm -hmm. It's state of emergency. That is it. it is sold out. So, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, she was just down here helping to train those models. If you ask models, they will help you. Samantha Levy, who used to be a plus model before I met Asha, um, actually helped me learn to walk. Now, my walk is still isn't to where I think it's like superb, but she actually mentored me. Oh, wow. Before I even, like when I first got in, mm -hmm. she really took her time and mentored me. She's in this area. Um, and you can, you can reach out to models. A model should, especially in the plus community, should want to help you. And even though I'm not always on the runway, like Eloquie may call me for an event, um, they may email me to come to an event, like the one, the fall in fashion store. one, mm -hmm. in-store events, or it's when I did their one-year anniversary show. Um, and I don't, like I said, I don't always model because everything else I do, but my, people reach out to me all the time. And there's models that are on the runway now that have reached out to me. Um, Ebony Walker, one of my friends. She's, she's been so a, dope. She's been in a ton of shows. She's doing <clears throat> so well. But we met during the Curves Rock thing. Um, oh. She inboxed me and was asking me how to get into the industry. I was like, I gave her all the information that everyone ever gave, gave me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, especially in the plus community, women, men, because we do have the male models, Yes, they should want to help you and give you advice because we can all win out here. Absolutely. It is not about, oh, I can't tell you because I don't want, I don't want you, you to take my, my spot. spot. Mm -hmm. No, we can all be one. There's a lot. Um, I was just looking it up yesterday. The Plus size fashion industry is a $21 billion industry. And by 2024 is, or in the next few years, it's looking to be more in the $24 billion. Wow. So there's enough money to be made out here. True story. So which is interesting that it is such a high dollar business and yet we are still marginally, like uh, majorly rather, um, underrepresented. And we have like yes. a, a, you know, there are some great designers that make plus size clothes. One of the struggles that I find with the plus size situation, right, mm -hmm. is I'll find some really cute stuff, but it'll be stupid expensive. And I'm oh like, oh, my gosh, yes. But then you have you have brands like Pretty Little Things, Fashion Nova, Forever 21, mm -hmm. um, Rainbow. There's it's at every there's price point, every price point. And the thing is that, you know, companies continue to jump on it. Brands are continuously getting into it, but we also have to still patronize our indie designers. And because, so that's the thing, some yes. of the indies, and I want to, right? But some of the indies are like pretty they're, pricey. They're pretty pricey, but you don't want, because they're their own small business, mm -hmm. you may want to reach out. You never know who will work with you, especially if it's something special. You never know what's going on. And sometimes they have sales. Um, uh, Christian Omishan, who is, I don't know if you've ever met her. Mm -hmm. Her pieces are amazing. I met her down in Atlanta at um, the TCS Style Expo. Mm -hmm. And she has some great pieces. Every once in a while, she does like 50% off. Oh, okay. On her website. Okay. Like every once in a while. It's not, it's random. Right. You have to be following them on social media. Some of them will cut deals. Okay. When they can. But if okay. it's a special piece, yeah, I mean, you have to think they're not a large brand. Sure. They no, no. And I get it. And I'm, I'm all here the time. for supporting. But I would say patronizing because before the brands started paying attention to they us, did. the indie designers did. True. True, true, true. Yeah. I mean, I see some slate skirts and stuff and I'm like, oh, I'd slay. But then I'm like. I don't really want to pay a hundred dollars for some, something I'm gonna use one. I mean, like I said, you have everything. You have big brands, you have indie designers, and mm -hmm. you have smaller boutiques. Maybe I'm thinking boutiques. I yeah, must be there, thinking there, boutiques. Yeah, there, there's because I'm not familiar with too many indie designers, yeah, but I think I'm thinking boutiques. Boutiques, but there are boutiques, but the boutiques have sales too. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'd say, know your price point, know your budget, follow the sales. So what would be like a lot of people? I think, and you know, in 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 the plus size community. We range. We range from extended sizes, which mm. I think is so cute, um, to everything in between. But we also range in body sizes, which straight size people do too. You right, know? right. But uh, where where can somebody find uh, like what their specific body type is? And I asked that because like I went to one store one day and I was like, "Ooh, that jacket's cute." And the girl was like, "Yeah, that's not gonna look right on you." Not shadefully. Mm -hmm. She was like, "That jacket's not gonna look right on you because you have a short torso." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "What the?" Like, I don't even know what that means. Like, and you know what? That's, I was going to say, 
go to the stores, find out those some of those stores. Um, and I'm gonna keep plugging Eloquent because their stylists. Okay, are, so for the record, uh, we love Eloquent. Okay, um, <laughs> but I, I also have a friend who went fashion and figure. I'm, I know mm-hmm. they, you know, went down and now they're back with New York and come right. They're opening more stores. Um, my friend Reggie, Reggie May. Yes, we've had him here too. <laughs> yes, I love Reggie. Reggie's a stylist, mm-hmm. but Reggie worked in retail. And he worked for Ashley Stewart, worked for Fashion and Figure. Mm-hmm. There's people at Eloquent. The people in the stores that work for these brands know about your sizing and your shape and what will look right on you. Okay. So, and it, it's always great to go in there um, and maybe do a styling session with them or just when you're feeling like you need pampering. Because mm-hmm. we all love to shop. And there's not that many plus Options. size, like brick and mortar. Like brick and, and that's the thing, right? So um, it's funny. One of my uh, girlfriends, Miss Lorraine, mm-hmm. um, I needed her help with something. And she was like, girl, look at this dress from Eloquy. And I was like, I'm, oh, it was a jumpsuit. I was like, girl, I'm going to have to go try that on. But that's the thing. Like with plus size in general, like this is bigger, this is smaller. Like a lot of stuff I feel like, oh, it's a crap shoot if I order it online. You right. know what I mean? But see, you have to think of also like the market. A lot of people are not trying to go in the stores. Mm-hmm. Eloquy actually was was a company. online it was online a long time ago remember and yes. then they shut down like they went out of business i didn't know that uh-huh and came back with it. they had to revamp and come back with a vengeance if you notice the plus size brands big brands that are doing mm-hmm. well are the ones that are getting involved in the community mm-hmm. that are doing things and to Eloquy make really is i know this do. is not a podcast about eloquent but <laughs> i just like i needed to well be no known. they're not the only ones ashley stewart I mean, James Reed came in and they, like, I think I was reading an article who said he came in and showed them that we needed to be kind to our Ooh. our customers. And now wow. they have the Finding Ashley. Yes. Uh, yes. And they go around to different cities, have women audition, and then they bring them to New York for a big, like, they do the voting online. Right. And get everybody involved. And engage. Engage yeah. your, your friends, your family. And then they have the big show, the Finding Ashley show in New York. And, I mean, they have celebs come out. They had... um, It's like the real deal. Right. They had Lonnie Love this Mm -hmm. year. They had SWV. Mm -hmm. The first year they had In Vogue performing. They have a lot going on. They have celebrities that are in the plus community, that are plus size. Mm -hmm. And then they have everyday women who come in there and try and all go for the spot of being having big name finding Ashley. Mm-hmm. And actually one of their um, house models for Ashley Stewart, Christina Mendez. I know that name. Um, mm-hmm. Beautiful model. Mm-hmm. Beautiful model. Love her. She told me when I interviewed her for the Plus Report one time that, you know, she liked the Ashley Stewart family because she was able to be the mom that she needs to be. Her son has, um, is, um, autistic. Oh, okay. And so she loved the family embracing that Ashley Stewart did. So it's mm-hmm. like these, you have, I think, with the plus size community, because of everything that society has told us about our bodies to be shamed, ashamed. Correct. And, but we all deserve great fashion and that's what brings us together. Mm-hmm. Um, that these brands need to get more into the community. And understand and it. And understand it and show us that we we are, that they are appreciative of us patronizing them. Mm. And I mean, that they love us because mm-hmm. that's what a plus size person is looking for, men, male or female. True. They're looking for that they can be loved, that they can show their bodies, they can be happy about and their bodies. And sexy body. if they want to be. And sexy if mm-hmm. they want to be, conservative if they want to be, mm-hmm. whatever it is mm-hmm. they want to be. The brands have to cater to that. But right. I like the fact that The Loft, actually, in Tyson's Corner just had an event. Really? Um, yeah, they have plus size clothing. They just had yeah. an event, and um, Akila was out there, the fullest side of things, mm-hmm. does her thing with social media correspondents. Some of um, the District Queens bloggers were They're there. They're so dope. I love them. We've had yeah. them, too. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you see, I get to run across all these people <laughs> doing what I do, but they were all out there. I missed it because, you know, my nine to five keeps me busy sometimes. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so they were out there, and like I said, the brands are... Sh- are sh- noticing they need to be in the community Mm -hmm. we are a community we have a voice we speak we have bloggers we have bloggers we have money we have money we have models but don't let them misuse us Mm -hmm. to build their brands up right don't let them do it because like the loft has straight size and plus size Mm -hmm. like i said a lot of brands are noticing (laughs) plus size women and men buy clothes hello they right. want great fashion. Right. They want to do what they do, and they want to look great while doing they're doing it. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a friend who has actually been, I mean, we just had an election, Wakenya. 
she works for the DNC. And she's been stomping for Stacey Abrams. She's been in Mississippi. This child dresses her butt off. Mm. I mean, she's wearing eloquent labor and everything. And I watch her while she's on the road during the elections, stomping for different candidates and looks amazing doing it. That's what I mean about someone who just wants to do what they do and have great fashion mm. on while they're doing it. Because why can't she look as good as everybody else? Hello. Hello. Yes. So, okay. Um, a couple more things before we have to wrap things up. Okay. Um, have you always been a body positive person? Did you ever okay. struggle with your weight? Did I? I've always struggled with my the weight. Age. I've always been a uh, plus size. Always been. I mean, I was caught. My family called me fat. So my grandfather called me fat. So I didn't think it was a bad thing. I just thought it was a term of endearment. It didn't dawn on me that that was like him just saying you're fat. Wow. And then my grandmother called me Miss Piggy, but Miss Piggy bad as hell. She had Kermit all that time, okay? <laughs> um, so I've always been plus size, wow. but my really? mom, yeah, I've always been um, a plus size girl, but my mom was plus I'm, size. I'm just shocked at the name. I'm sorry. The I'm name sorry. that my yeah. grandfather, he no, called me like fat, so, but I never, you know what it is? When he called me that, I never took it as anything negative. Okay. And some people might be like, oh my gosh, why did he call you that? But I, didn't, I don't know. I guess I was a happy kid. I was loved. My right. grandfather loved the heck out of me. And it wasn't, but it. I, I think there's the difference is it didn't come from a place of malice. It wasn't he, meant no, to shame you. No, he was you. like, come here, fat so. Oh, Let oh, me hug okay. you and kiss you. Okay. But he called, okay. that was his nickname for mm-hmm. me, fat so. Mm-hmm. Like, You're so fat. But I just didn't. And as a kid, I didn't get it. Like, that's what granddad called me. Right. But my mom has always been plus size my entire life. And I was oh. just telling um, Gwen DeVoe, who... Um, is the director and creator of Full Figure Fashion Week. How mm-hmm. my mom had this, and i never forget it, she'll watch this thing and be like, girl, I don't even know where that jumpsuit is. She had this velour jumpsuit with pearls around it from Lane Bryant, and her and my dad just go out. When she wore that suit, I just knew. I was like, I could still be fly. I probably have to find the picture one day of her in it, but I knew I could be fly because mama had that. Mama was a baddie in that. Okay. So I was always... You had a good example. Yeah, I did. But I mean, in high school, probably it hit me a little more because high school is when you start noticing your body, you start noticing boys. And the mean girls come out. I was the mean girl at times. I'm so sorry to say. I was, I was never probably, a mean girl. I, probably, I went to Seton first, okay? It's all girl school. It's kind of rough. You got to be a little mean. <laughs> well, she was trying to date the Demantha voice. Shout out. <laughs> um, so in high school, I probably noticed my weight a little bit more. Okay. Um, didn't stop me from dating, guys. I got cute boyfriends all the time. But probably noticed a little bit more in high school. I always, you know, sometimes I'd be like, okay, I'm getting too big for my body. Like, that's not my normal weight. Um, need to tighten it up. But... Honestly, this this size I am now is the largest I've ever been, and I feel sexy as hell. I know that's right. I mean, I'm actually I was just talking to one of the photographers I work with about doing my next boudoir shoot. So it's, she just is like goals <laughs> in every level because I ain't doing no damn boudoir shoot. So you're gonna do a boudoir We're shoot not one doing day. That. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, you guys, I'm gonna get Deja to do a boudoir shoot. We're not. I am. Um, watch, watch me work. This is my girl. I've got her. I'm miserable. <laughs> Go ahead. You're gonna do it. Um, no, I just talked to um, photographer Lisa Fleet in Baltimore. She's amazing. She um, she does boudoir photography, and she knows how to get those great angles, no matter what size you are, no matter wow. what your insecurities are. And she's very easy to work with. Okay. So yeah, I just I was just talking to a whole team about like who the person I want to use for lingerie. I'm talking to Mickey because we are actually going to do an episode about it to show people what I go through yes. to do a boudoir shoot and why I do it. And see, the thing is, most people do boudoir shoots for weddings or for their significant other, right. which um, I'm dating, so I'm still fairly single, as they say, because I'm not <laughs> married. Um, so um, I don't do it for anyone but me. Mm. I love lingerie. Okay. And no, I can't show it all the time. I can't just walk on the street on lingerie. So I like to take nice, cute pictures just to have them. Okay. And it's for nobody. It's not to be suggestive in any way. It's the photos I take are very tasteful, very classy, but I love them. The last one I did, I had on like a faux fur coat, had the lingerie on the cigar and whiskey because I love to drink whiskey. Nice. Yeah. Cute. Okay. So before we wrap up, um, tell everyone how they can get information on The Plus Report. So The Plus Report, you can follow us on Instagram at The Plus Report, or you can follow me on Instagram at Monica underscore the curvy diva. 
And that's with a K. Get it right. Yes. Monica the Curvy Diva with a K. Yay. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you so much. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us for another edition of What's Popping the Podcast, only on 93.9 WKYS.